I think it's pretty clear that one of the main success stories of this preseason has been uh, Nikola Jovic, just uh, the way he's been utilized, the, the, the expectation defensively is kind of upheld there. Uh, the different ways he's been used offensively, he was really good last night in the Houston Rockets game. Uh, once again, even after uh, playing big in those two road games in, in Brooklyn and Memphis. Uh, but I just want to go over two things from his offensive game. It's the way he's being utilized. There's two different sets or actions he's kind of being uh, spammed in that he's just very good in. Uh, and the funny thing is that the both of them have nothing to do with each other. Like they don't utilize the same skill set at all. And that's what makes him so intriguing because his bag is so broad this early on. Uh, that he can be utilized in different spots, being as big as he is and skilled, skilled as he is. So uh, I'm just going to go through two of them. The first one I'm going to go through a couple of clips of uh, is just the normal pick and pop. But there's a little twist to it is because uh, it has to, it's basically being used with one of their kind of conventional shooters, like Max Struess or Duncan Robinson. We've yet to see it like with a Tyler Hero or let's say a Kyle Lowry and maybe how it looks a little different. But the way it looks next to a, just a straight shooter, a catch and shoot guy, uh, has been intriguing, and I'll showcase why. So this first one, it's been a lot of Duncan Robinson and him, and we've been talking about the two-man action between them. But Max last night even had a couple plays with him that showcased the kind of way it can be utilized. So right here, it's just getting him free a little bit. He's going to run a little handoff. Now gets into the screen. Uh, and to showcase here, it's the big thing here is kind of it has to be against drop. And most of the time, it probably will be. And in these minutes, Jovic was playing the five. So that's kind of the, the, kind of the upward angle of kind of going to him at the five because i know there's going to be times where he can't really defend true fives and we're going to have those conversations uh but if he's utilized like it offensively you're forcing drop bigs to guard him in that way and then the pick and pop stuff can basically be spanned because it makes it so difficult for a defense so right here uh just quick pick and pop he comes around it uh sangoon's just kind of trying to contain you basically have to have just elite level uh communication defensively because there's just no way that you can be able to fight over a screen on a shooter to make sure he doesn't get that shot. And also the big has to recover. So right here, he pops out, he fights over. Now he has to run all the way out at him. That's an easy shot for him all the way. Uh, another one right here, it's going to swing, swing to Duncan Robinson. Now another pick and pop right here. Uh, he gets it, draws two, swings it over there. And that's an easy shot. Almost every time Duncan Robinson comes off the Jovic screen and roll, uh, he's getting two, like two are flying at the ball. And that's why we're saying kind of looking at Duncan Robinson playing really well right now and saying that he's, if he continues to do this and draw two, he just has to be utilized because it's hard to look kind of overlook that in a lot of ways. Another one right here, it's kind of inbound. Same thing though. It's Jovic's screening for him in the corner. Three are basically going to fly to him right here. Swing over to Jovic, easy look. If he's just knocking down these easy looks, and I think the Heat are pretty confident that he can, uh, he's going to get easy looks when he's on the floor just because of the reason and the shooting and the offense that they have on this team. And that's not even counting the amount of rim pressure they're going to add when they're giving Depot long minutes, when Jimmy Butler is back, when Bam Adebayo is back. Uh, so that's why I think Jovic kind of can be utilized in this way. Last one, another pick and pop option. Guarding Duncan off the pick and roll is pretty crazy because they're giving him a lot of reps out of pick and rolls. That's something I don't think translates to the regular season because I don't expect to see uh, kind of Duncan Robinson paint touches or getting down low. But if he can add that, that adds even more to this conversation. But I think it's pretty clear that they were trying to get to these pick and pops and see how they look. Next, we'll see how they look with other guys in the roster. But the shooting element of this with Duncan and Max clearly can be utilized because it just looks very good, especially when he's knocking down the jumper. Uh, the second action is something I've been talking a lot about uh, is the high post splits. So you, everybody kind of knows the idea of what they look like because Bam Adebayo is one of the, the better big man post split passers in this league because he's uh, a gifted passer but he's also kind of big enough to look over the defense over the top and kind of provide spacing while the Miami Heat run their, their movement offense on the backside. Uh, it's also why I've been saying that I think the Heat kind of uh, fall into more of that motion offense this year just because losing P.J., they're adding more offense, adding more versatility, flexibility, uh, so they could do more stuff like this. But here's Jovic at the high post split right here. This is a pretty self-explanatory one because it's just hitting the open guy because uh, – the Rockets defense falls asleep a whole lot. But right here, falls asleep, Gabe cuts, hits him. Uh, and when I asked Jovic about it after the game, just about these post splits, he basically said it's easy for him. It's just about finding the open man in these type of slots. And a play like this one specifically in Houston, that's self-explanatory. It was just hitting the open spot, slots. Now, and as I lead into this game in Brooklyn, this is a little different. This is uh, kind of having a script in hand that they're going to run stuff because they did the same play to maximize Jovic's passing and Jamal Kane's athleticism. 
uh, kind of insert pass right here, high post split. He's looking over the top. Duncan's doing a little back screen right here so Jamal King can get back door. They don't have uh, the Mets defense. Once again, no communication there. They don't fight over. Uh, easy pass over the top. Jamal King dunks it. The last one, once again, high post split, insert pass, Gabe screening back door, Jamal King lob. That scripted stuff is great uh, because they know what they have with these two guys. This isn't something they're just – this is like trial runs for just the preseason. This is stuff that can actually be utilized because Nikola Jovic is a very, very skilled passer. And uh, as he was saying after the game yesterday, like in Europe, he was playing mostly perimeter. This was a lot of swing pass, pick and roll passing. He didn't do a whole lot of this post split stuff because that wasn't his role. Now this is going to be his role. Uh, and what are we four games in? And he already looks pretty elite in that role. Uh, that's something they're going to utilize him with. So the passing out of post splits, the shooting out of pick and pops, once he gets minutes this season, which I expect now, like that, there's a higher expectation of that happening. Uh, those are the two main sets that you have to look for that he's basically going to be utilizing.